Hi, this is Lori from Lou's Antiques and Collectibles, and today we're doing a craft project, which I don't do a lot of these days, but sometimes it's kind of fun. I happen to have a lot of these screens that I had bought at a barn sale for like a dollar a piece, and for a while I was putting reefs on them and they were selling well, but now um, the reefs don't seem to sell as well, so I was trying to think what I could do with these things. So I have been painting pumpkins and snowman on these screens and they are going like hotcakes. I'm by no means an artist. I don't even know really what I'm doing, but they're very primitive looking and uh, the people seem to like them. So that's all that really matters. So today I'm going to show you how I do that. So here's another project I did with painting pumpkins. I had some old screen doors that I needed a use for and uh, I painted three pumpkins on that one so we'll see how it goes we'll be taking all of this stuff to our next show and hopefully we sell it all so the first thing you need to do is to have a covered area to paint the screens on um, I do them outside when I can we happen to be having a really warm October here in Michigan so I'm taking advantage of the weather and try to get some of these done now I also do snowmen too and when um, I get to those I'll put another video on those. So I cover the pla table with plastic. I've tried newspaper and the newspaper sticks to the back of the screen. With the screens you have to use a ton more paint than you would never, that would you ever would use on any type of other objects because most of the paint falls down. So it's a bit of a challenge. So I've kind of experimented and uh, this is how I get started. So here's the screen I'm going to be using to paint my pumpkin on. And um, painting the screen, um, it depends on how big the mesh is inside the screen and how difficult it is. These happen to be a real wide mesh. They're real old. This window, along with the other ones in the beginning, came from a barn sale. And the lady was so nice. She sold them all to me for a dollar each. And some of these actually came from the barn attic she went up in the attic and pulled more down so of course I bought all of them because I thought there's something I can do with these and I'm sure I can make a little money on so I use what I have it may not be the best brushes it may not be the best paint but I use what I have um, there are other folks that have a better paint and better tools and I'm sure that makes it easier but I am doing this on a budget and to resell these screens and to give a purpose to them so when I mix paints I just use paper plates it's easiest for me I'm sure a, a specific thing would be better but I use just a paper plate okay what I'm gonna do first is just outline the pumpkin and it's very easy I'm just making a big circle with a dip in the top so I'll take my brush and go ahead and do that so I'm working on making the outline of the pumpkin. I just make basically a giant circle. You know, this is very forgiving. It's supposed to be primitive looking. That's about what I can do handle. I'm certainly not no artist. So I just basically make a large circle with a little divot on the top. And if I don't like the curve of the circle, I go back and make it a little bigger. Like over here looks like it needs to be more over here. It doesn't really matter. This is just my outline. Okay, so there's the circle. Now with a pumpkin, there's usually some indentations. So with that, I start at the top, kind of go towards the middle, and just bring my brush down. Like I said, this is a very primitive drawing. Like any kid could probably do this. That's the best part about it. Because that's probably at the level I'm at. Okay, there's that. And here is the other side. And I always get ideas when I look on Pinterest and things like that to know how to draw something or So here is my outline of my pumpkin. Now I'm going to add a stem on the top. Just 
just in the black here. Like I said, I'm definitely not done with this by any means. And then I'm going to add a little bit of triangles there where the stem goes down onto the pumpkin. So there's our basic outline. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to make this a little darker so it looks better. The thing with the, the screen painting is it seems to look dark on the table, but as soon as you pick it up, I'll show you what happens. So it's very deceiving. It becomes very light and difficult to see. So you have to use a lot more paint than you think you would on these screens, especially with this wide uh, mesh that I'm dealing with. So I'm going to darken that up and then we'll go on to the next step. So the pumpkin has been darkened in, so now I'm going to start painting with the orange. I just use acrylic paints and then I put a sealer on it when I'm done. But like I said, I am no artist. This is just a project I decided to do. I had a lot of screens and I needed a way to sell them and make them a little nicer, so this is what I did. So um, I do a little sh uh, shading. So I have some orange here. What I usually do is put the Let's put a little black in the orange and then whenever there's a line I put it the darkened orange next to the line so it's if you can mix your paints you save a lot of money on buying all the separate shades so if you have a good white and a black you can usually do it and I didn't even clean my brush as you can see so what I'm going to do is put the darkened orange next to the line and one thing nice about the screen is it blends quite nicely you can blend paint um, the biggest time-consuming part of this is getting enough paint on the screen like right on the table it looks pretty good but when if I pick it up it's very see-through which is fine but you don't want it to be so see-through that you can't see so I do do the dark Kind of mix it in with the black a little bit. I'm just shading up to the orange of the pumpkin. So I hit all the lines. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. Please don't comment and tell me what a bad artist I am because I'm not professing to be anything good. This is just what I do. I try to use up all my materials and the things that I've bought and on projects so if I have an abundance of something like I had these screens but I was using them initially with reefs then I try to find a use for them so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and shade all that darkened in for you so I've painted all my darkened orange areas that I mixed with a little black and you really use a lot of paint I went through almost a whole tube already just to do this little area but something I want to point out and it's pretty rough looking, but that's the whole idea. I want it to look like a primitive. If you lift this up now again, you will have drip marks on the back. So what you need to do, and hopefully you can see this. You probably can't, but I'll show you here in a second. Is you need to take your brush and just go over those drip marks. But it's real important that you lay it back down exactly the same because otherwise the paint on the plastic will get up on your project and you'll have a big mess. Although it looks pretty messy right now. So now we're going to go ahead and add just the plain orange. And what I do, I use a stencil brush lately, but I've used everything. I've used every, all different kinds of brushes. But a stencil brush seems to hold the paint a little bit more. Seems to hold more paint. But I've used basic artist brushes. I've used even house painting brushes like this when I did the snowman because I like to swirl with them and they work really good for that. So a lot of this paint came from a craft store or I even got some at the Dollar Tree. But I'm sure there's much better brands um, than what I'm using. But I'm trying to do this on a budget to make my profit a little bit better. So this is how I'm doing it. Okay, now we're going to go to the regular orange. Okay, when I put the regular orange on, I'm going to put it all in the middle here, and then I'll put a highlight eventually with a yellow orange. But I try to kind of work it in with the dark orange to kind of 
blend it. And they blend quite, kind of nicely on these screens. So it doesn't look like lines. But like I said, I am no artist. I don't know if this is right, wrong, or indifferent. This is just what I do. It's supposed to look primitive, so I want it to be kind of big and messy. That's probably the best kind of painting for me, <laughs> to do primitive type looking stuff. There's no pressure. It's not quite right. So like I said, you can see me, I kind of blend it into the sides. So it looks like it's more cohesive. So I will fill that in and we'll move on to the next step. And here's our pumpkin with the orange on it. So now I need to add a little bit of highlights to it. So I use a little bit of this yellow paint. And now, like I said, I don't even clean my brush. I just put a little bit in the middle of each of these three spots. it looks nice when it has some different shades in them. So there's the middle and then I do the same thing over here. I put a little, a little yellow on it and I kind of mix it in a bit right under the screen so it gives it a bit of a highlight. And then over here same thing. I put a little yellow on there. give us some highlights okay well, that looks pretty good so now we're going to move to the stem and the grass on the bottom so right now I'm going to do the green for the stem of the pumpkin and typically I go through the same process where I do the darkened green first but because I want to paint some blades of grass I'm just going to use the regular green and I will just shade it later with the darkened version. So right now I'm just gonna put a regular old green on and then I'll add some black into the green to do a little shading. So you have to use a lot of paint as you can see. That's the biggest expense with this. It's not hard to do. It takes time but it's the paint because you have to use so much of it and a lot of it ends up right on the on the plastic on the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to paint some blades of grass. And I don't make these anything fancy. I just paint different lines going in different directions. I'm sure somebody could do this much better. That's more of a qualified painter. But for me, the idea is it's supposed to look primitive, so I don't really, I don't really care if it's perfect. I think that gives it the, the look more that I want. And a lot of times I just go like this on the bottom. So it kind of blends in. And we're a little bit wet there in that pumpkin, so. So what I'm going to use on the blades is I use three colors of green. So I'm doing a little bit with this green, I'll do a little bit with the dark, and then I have a lighter version I'll use. So it looks, uh, I don't want to say more natural, but <laughs> it just looks better. We'll just leave it at that. Got a plane flying overhead. It's making an awful lot of noise. Okay, so there is my regular green. A little bit here. And there are my blades of grass. Okay, now I'm going to mix in a little bit of black and make a darkened green to do some shading. So here I'm mixing my green with a little bit of black just to make it a little bit darker. And then I'll do some shading with this and I'll do some blades of grass with this. So we'll come up here by the stem and I'll kind of put some darkened paint around the edges. Now same thing as the pumpkin, I'm going to do the dark around the edges and the, the highlight in the middle. I just kind of put it on and mix it in a little bit. And then on the bottom, 
I'm going to do some more blades of grass. This darkened paint. I make them go all different directions. Grass doesn't grow straight, so. <laughs> And I'll be doing one more color. I'm going to do a light green. Kind of like a more of a neon kind of green to do the highlights and to do more blades of grass. I typically just go like that on the bottom. I don't really care if all the colors mix together. I think it looks better that way. But this, there is no precision involved. <laughs> That's for sure. It's kind of mixed together, and that's kind of the look I want. So I'll finish that up, and then we'll go to our lighter green. So here's my lighter green I'm going to use for the highlighting of the stem, and I'm going to do some more blades of grass with this. I'm going to put some of this in the middle, kind of just blend it in a little bit so it's not so stark. Go. And then on the bottom, I'm going to make more blades of grass with this lighter green. That is going to be it. Now remember to turn it over, lift it up to make sure you don't have drips with all this paint. Just take your brush and you can just go over the back where it's dripping. Otherwise, what I've found that happens is if I stand it up to dry, I got all these drips in the back. And what a mess. Because you have to use so much paint to complete this project. And we'll just put a little bit down here. Going in every different direction. Remember primitive, it's not supposed to be perfect supposed to be a very basic drawing. I'm sure perfect would probably look good on some of these screens, but they are uh, pretty difficult to paint on. Like I said, I'm sure there's better materials that can be used, but I'm using what I have. I don't want to put any more money into these. And actually, I've already sold quite a few of them at the Antique Mall, but I'm going to be taking them to a show that I'm having this weekend. So make sure and stay tuned. I'm going to also do some snowmen. So watch for that. That's really fun. It's an easy project too. Just takes time. And there we go. So what I'm going to do here is some of my black lines need to be darkened. I'm going to darken them and then I'm going to put a, a coat of some clear sealant on this. So it stays sealed. And then we'll be done. I'll be showing you the end result. So here's our completed pumpkin. It needs to dry for a little while. Um, sometimes when you pull it off the table, it seems like all your paint is left on the plastic. So I had to give it a little bit more paint while it was upright. It's a process. You never know what you're going to do. Each pumpkin is different. And then once it dries, I'll put a coat of sealant on it. And I'm going to take one of them and put them on my front porch to show you how cute these can look. And here's a completed pumpkin that I put on my front porch for a display. I got an old wash tub behind it. So that's one of the ways you can use it for decoration, outside or in. Thank you for tuning in, and I'm going to show you a quick clip of what our snowman project looks like so you can see it for the next time. So here's another project that I've done painting on screens. I've done a snowman, I have doors, and I have windows, and uh, hopefully we'll be making a YouTube on that. You can see how that's done. They turn out pretty cute. The weave on this screen is much better than the other screen, so that makes it a little bit easier to do. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for new episodes, and don't forget to like us, ring the bell, and subscribe. Goodbye.